apparently we're having a competition this week for, I don't know if it's morning hair or late night hair, considering when Hannah posted, but uh, despite this situation, I, I think she still might win. I mean, it takes up the entire screen. Have you noticed that? Like, even if I get in close, it's not going to take up the whole screen. So, Hannah, I'll let you have the hair. This is 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of will, 5% pleasure, 50% pain, and 100% reason to remember the name. Seamus held out his hand to Puck and peeled his fingers back. Nestled in his palm was a small black stone, not shiny and smooth, but pure, pitch black as the absence of light. And Puck and Finn looked at it, and the darkness spread out in every way from Seamus's hand until it swallowed the room. What in the green grass, said Uncle Finn, just before the sound was leached from the space with the color and the light, plunging Puck and Finn both into absolute darkness. Neither spoke for several moments, and then Puck gave a nervous chuckle. Do you still want to? He began, blushing and thankful for the dark. And before Finn could answer, the world began to shift again. The black receded, started in one corner and peeled back, shrinking across a space that was no longer the room they'd been standing in moments before, but a cliffside. Their shoes scuffing the edges of the rocks where the world seemed to fall away onto a vast expanse of water and wave and stone. Puck stumbled back from the edge and fell to the ground, cursing, Finn still looking over his toes at the long, long drop. Careful now, chuckled Seamus behind them. Devil's work, growled Puck, pushing himself to his feet. What's the meaning of turning the world so without any warning? I'm not even wearing proper clothes said Uncle Finn, suddenly self-conscious. Seamus cocked one eyebrow and appraised them both before turning away from the cliffside. There's something you need to see, he called back, and with that, Seamus headed across the grass. <laughs>